In this lesson, we'll explore the color management settings found in the Pro version of Rebel. These settings will define how colors appear on your screen, as well as how they translate to print or other devices. I'll load the color management template, and let's go to Edit Color Management. These preferences define the color profile you'll be working with when you open artwork or create a new canvas. The dialog is divided into several sections. The top setting determines the default color profile for new documents. Any artwork you create after choosing a default will utilize that color profile. My preferred profile for digital painting is Adobe RGB. If the Adobe RGB color profile is missing on your system, you can download it for free online. This is a color profile made by Adobe, but it also works with Rebel and many other art applications. Without getting too technical, Adobe RGB has a larger color range or gamut than sRGB, which is the default profile in most art applications. You can see the difference in color coverage in this diagram. In layman's terms, you can pick any color from your color picker, but the full color range may not be available to you if you are working in sRGB. By selecting Adobe RGB as your color profile, the number of colors that can be displayed in your image will be increased. And if your display supports an extended color range, the color you see will be more accurate. The depth of color in the image will also be increased, allowing you to paint with colors in that extended range. I prefer to use Adobe RGB as my default for new artwork, but you can choose sRGB if you like. Choose Do Not Manage if color management is not important to you. Under General, you can see that this image is already using Adobe RGB. You can customize the rendering intent. Rendering intent controls the method used to convert colors between profiles. We have Perceptual, Saturation, Relative Colorimetric, and Absolute Colorimetric. With Perceptual, colors are generally desaturated in order to preserve their perceived relationship. This can make for very smooth transitions between colors. This mode works well for a variety of images, especially artwork and photographs. If you're working primarily with simple graphics using solid colors, you might choose saturation. Saturation is similar to perceptual, except that more saturation is preserved at the expense of hue accuracy. Relative colorimetric tries to reproduce colors with as little desaturation as possible. Out of gamut colors are moved to the nearest point within the gamut. Absolute colorimetric tries to reproduce colors scaled to the white point of the source color space. This is mainly used when proofing colors. Unless you know what you're doing, it's fine to leave this set to relative colorimetric. Black point compensation helps maintain shadow detail when converting between source and destination color spaces. Next is policies. When we open an image that uses a color profile that is different from the default we chose, we have the option of using the profile that is embedded in the image, or we can automatically convert the color of the image to match our default profile. Generally speaking, you'd probably want to use the embedded color profile because converting the color profile will likely augment the colors, sometimes for the worse. When in doubt, it doesn't hurt to convert the color profile and see if it harmed the image. If not, then save a copy so you don't overwrite your original. There is also a policy for what to do when you paste or import images without a profile. The workspace profile is the default you've chosen above. Moving down to display, here you can choose independent color profiles for each display. My Cintiq 27 QHD Touch and Cintiq Pro 16 can utilize a higher 32-bit color depth, so they can be set to Adobe RGB. The other two displays can only show a limited sRGB range, so they can remain at sRGB. You can choose the rendering intent when moving images between displays. Relative colorimetric is a fine default. Now if I drag my application window between these displays, the color I see should update accordingly. I can also use the preview panel to see two representations of my color at once. Now that you have some idea of what color profiles are, Let's take a look at what they do to your image. Under Proof Colors, you can choose the Soft Proofing Profile. This will allow you to preview how your artwork may look on another device or in print. You can toggle this view mode on and off using the keyboard shortcut of Control y By default, this is set to sRGB with relative colorimetric rendering intent. And again, black point compensation helps maintain shadow detail when converting between source and destination color spaces. I'll press Ctrl-Y to soft proof, 
And now the color profile has been temporarily converted from Adobe RGB to sRGB. You may not notice a difference until you look closely. The image has become much less vibrant, especially in the reds and oranges. Blue is also much duller too. So what this shows is that although this image looks very vibrant on my display, if someone views it on an average device, it's going to look a lot duller. How much the color changes depends on the colors in the artwork and the profiles involved in the conversion. The embedded Adobe RGB color gamut is larger than the sRGB color gamut I converted to, so some color information has been thrown away. Similar to how resolution works in your image, color information is also kind of a one-way street. If you start with a lot of color depth, you can remove some and end up with less. But if you start with fewer colors and you try to add more, it just doesn't work because the computer can't add color detail that's not already there. Let's try a more extreme example of a color profile change. I'll change the soft proofing color profile to US Web Coded Swap V2. This has a lot of the same desaturation that occurs when converting to sRGB, but the black and very dark colors also lose a lot of contrast and become much lighter. This is because this color profile is meant for printing, and in print, colors are reproduced much differently. The Adobe RGB profile has a larger gamut, plus the display is projecting the color into your eyes, so everything is much more vibrant with a wider range of colors. What this shows is that if I print this image as is, it's not going to look nearly as bright and colorful. It may not look exactly like the soft proof, but it will show where the color will take the biggest hit. You could try to adjust the colors using filters if they need to be shifted a bit, but you cannot simply add saturation and expect the image will print correctly because there is a limit to how vibrant printer inks are to begin with. The best approach to color accuracy is to avoid painting with colors that are outside of the color gamut you will be printing from or displaying in. This is where the color gamut warning feature comes into play. If I use the shortcut of Control shift y I can see a colored overlay on top of colors that are not within the gamut I am soft proofing or potentially converting to. You can also find this in the view menu. Currently this overlay is red, but you can change it in the preferences. As you can see, nearly the whole image is out of gamut. Almost all of the colors will be augmented if I convert to this profile. If I delete this layer so that I have a blank canvas, I can pick a few vibrant and dull green colors and paint onto the canvas with them. You can immediately see which colors will not reproduce correctly using this color profile. If I change the soft proofing to sRGB, you can see that fewer colors create an issue, but the very bright ones are going to be a bit duller. I'll revert this image. Soft proofing has enabled us to quickly preview the effects of changing a color profile, but let's see what happens when we actually apply one. I'll choose Edit Convert to Profile. This will let us choose from several profiles and preview their effects before committing to one. Let's choose sRGB, and you can see how the image will change. I don't see much of a difference between any of the rendering intents, but that varies from image to image. If I apply this, those colors will be permanently changed unless I undo or choose not to save this file. I recommend saving a copy of your artwork anytime you create a color conversion because you may not want to throw away the color information that was in your original. If we choose Adobe RGB for the soft proofing mode, there won't be any change at all when converting the colors because the Adobe RGB color gamut is wider, so no colors need to be thrown away or altered. This is why I set my color profile default as Adobe RGB before I start creating paintings. That way, all of the artwork I create will have a wide color gamut to begin with. There is also an option to assign a color profile. This is not going to convert the color, rather it just embeds the file with profile information. You can use this to remove a profile from an image as well. Next, let's look at a color preference that can affect how a file with a hidden paper should look when imported into third-party software like Photoshop. This is especially important if you're using pigment mixing because it's only supported in Rebel. I've painted some strokes using pigment mixing, and then I've hidden the canvas layer and saved three files, one for each option. If I open them in Photoshop and cycle through them, you can see how the transparency changes slightly. In this case, I don't see any noticeable color changes, but you may want to experiment with this preference if you're getting unexpected color or transparency when you open your Rebel files elsewhere. 
That's about all there is to say about color management. For more on this subject, check out my reference video.